This is Bakura, a district in West Bengal whose parched red soil prays for rain throughout the year. With its red dry soil and green shawl grove, Bakura once gave birth to a flourishing folk culture. The old heritage may have dried up considerably, but is far from dead. These moss-grown temples still retain fine examples of the terracotta art of this region. Behind much of the noble and elusive simplicity of Jamini Rai's art lies the rich tradition of his native home, Bakura, where he was born in the middle of April 1887 at Beletur village. It was these village craftsmen who aroused in young Jamini his first interest in form and design. The passion for painting caught him very young indeed and Jamini's broad-minded father Ram Tarun Rai, a well-to-do landowner, agreed to send his 16-year-old son to the government school of art in Calcutta, probably because of his own deep interest in art. Here, at the art school, young Jamini diligently learned and became extremely proficient in the Western academic technique. The encouragement and appreciation from Principal Parsi Brown formed the primary asset of Jamini Rai in his early life. But before he took a diploma, he quietly left the school and quickly earned success as an able portrait painter in oil. This brilliant self-portrait was done at the prime of his fame as a portrait painter, when Jamini Rai saw comparative affluence, but not happiness. It gave him a living, but gave him no life. The growing need of a restless mind could hardly be satisfied by mere imitation. Between the desire for self-expression and the monotony of his routine work, the gap widened every day until the traditional craftsmen of his village, the folk painters of Bengal and the terracotta figurines of Bankura and Bishnupur moved his soul. The moment of decision had arrived. Jamini gave up painting fashionable portraits, preferring poverty and art. In spite of the fact that he had now married Anandamui and there were several children to bring up, Jamini Rai gradually learned to unlearn all his academic discipline. Representation was no longer his aim. It was transformation. From the folk painters of Kaligat, he learned his characteristically firm and bold sweep of line and economy of detail.
working in oils, unusually simple themes crept into the frames of his painting. And when at last he discarded oils in favor of watercolor, the illusion of third dimension was also rejected. Then followed the practice of an austere economy in his use of both line and color. Water-based tempera color had opened up for him a horizon of new possibilities. But was it, thought the artist, an equally suitable medium for expressing European technique? As a result, an extraordinary series of landscape paintings were created. Tilly's association with the theatre world of Calcutta gave him considerable knowledge of design and pattern. The uncompromising struggle with himself gained further momentum after he recognized the lack of sophisticated technique in the simple bold design scrawled unconsciously by his 5-year-old son Omio who later became a fine painter and his great father's dedicated studio worker. The choice of subjects was rich and inexhaustible. Colors also returned in full glory. force behind his new forms and designs came from ancient Indian myths to which he now turned for inspiration. Consider, for instance, the exquisite panels on the Krishna theme.
also note with care the famous panels from the Ramayana. tenderness, tranquility and compassion of these panels on Indian themes were conveyed with equal mastery in his later studies on the symbolic life of Christ. time, Jamini Rai tried his hand at wood sculpting or clay modeling and always pursued his interest in the diverse artistic techniques of other countries. The comprehensive tempera medium withstood the test of reproducing almost anything from the elaborate gods and goddesses of Tibet and China to a self-portrait of Van Gogh. By this time, after years of agonizing struggle, Jamini Rai, the artist, had arrived on a truly international level. Indeed, the spread of Jamini Rai's fame abroad was almost as rapid as in his own country. But it was wrong to say that his first recognition came from abroad. In the 1930s, an important section of Indian opinion came out in support of him. Important among them were a small group of Bengali poets and intellectuals who recognized the emergence of an artist of international stature. One of them was the poet Vishnu Dev, who had tirelessly immersed himself in Jamini Rai's art for nearly 40 years. After the Second World War, Jamini Rai shifted from his rented house in North Calcutta and built his own studio in the less congested southern part of the city. His new home again became a favorite haunt to friends and art lovers, like the old days in the old house. Jamini Rai's capacity for work never waned. The last 20 years, between 1950 and 1970, were marked by an astonishing volume and variety of work. After 1950, in his search for a means of expression, the unbroken smoothness of his lines and colour seemed to have reached a point where further exploration was impossible. Jamini Rai went one step further and decided to break his lines and churn the texture of his surface, thereby belying the prediction of certain critics who had claimed that Jamini Rai had reached the limits of invention.
large patches of color came now to fill the entire surface. strips of palm leaf or supple paperboard as a painting surface was the last step to take. In 1970, he was 83 years old. Age had begun to catch up with him. Failing health prevented him from doing any work. But sit in his place of work he must, and make feeble efforts to paint. But the fingers would not move, and the eyes would now play unkind tricks. Yet straight away he would start painting Christ's Last Supper, the theme he had done a number of times in the past. The basic drawing would be complete on a rough surface, and now the colors were to come in all their splendor. But the mingling never got going. The Last Supper remained unfinished. Phlegm had settled upon his chest, causing pneumonia. The painter survived the first attack. The second attack proved extremely severe, but he surprised the doctors by eluding death again. The end came in 1972, on the 24th of April, the month he was born 85 years earlier. Thank you. 